Today I'd like to talk about chip efficiency and computer efficiency in general. Due to the complex nature of this topic, or better said my unwillingness to do the video due to various time constraints and dreadful audience retention, this will be a two-part video. Let's start with the CPU, the component we all try to chip out on because, just like in real life, the brain isn't all that important. And to immediately showcase its efficiency, we will do a couple of Blender renders, utilizing all cores of a 6-core CPU at 5, 15, 30, 45 and 60 watts, utilizing AMD's power calculations. The metrics we'll be watching out for are time to complete the render, heat, and power which will be shown in many graphs that I've made as an excuse to use Excel, which is luckily bugged to its core. It is important to know that by default, the faster the CPU is, the less efficient it is. To simplify, CPU does math. Every time it does math, it needs a little bit of power. But the faster you want your task to be finished, the more power it needs to add. As a human body equivalent, you can sprint for a little while and cross a short distance, quickly, and die. But walking will get you further for the same amount of energy, in a longer time period. And now, silence, until the benchmark is complete. The results are the typical exponential curve, where the higher the power is, the less additional performance you receive. This is most notable on the frequency gain and it is where efficiency starts to drop. And the waste ratio you see here is technically a simple calculation of how much power is needed to complete the task in its own unit of time, with one being the smallest. The reason why 5 watts is less efficient is probably because the power intake is so small the CPU ends up starved. Finally, we have a graph regarding temperature, where things of note were at 5 watts, the fans were off, which, like trickle-down economy, didn't achieve much of anything. And as expected, the higher the workload, the higher the average, and the maximum temperatures were, with the exception of the 55 watt one, where the average was slightly lesser with the help of the CPU fans working at their damn best channeling the noise of a jet engine. These numbers are even more noticeable in high-end desktop CPUs, since efficiency is not really their primary intent. This is most noticeable during boosts, where some CPUs work at a chilling 300 watts. One could illustrate it as a circle of blue fire inside. Finally, a recap. On this graph we can see the power increase that we did, starting from 5 watts, and its effect on decreasing the render time. Most notably, going from 5 watts to 30 reduced the render time by roughly 77%, while going from 5 watts to 55 did so by roughly 80%. The jump from 30 to 55 barely reduced an additional total of 3% render time. Next up, we'll be moving to 256 cycles render, which is a little bit slower. I have taken the necessary precautions and repeated the same in 1024 cycles to make sure thermal throttling could not skew the results. It did not. However, for the sake of my own sanity, I have decided not to edit it into the video. Also, at the bottom right, there is a random video of me avoiding the completion of this video by any means necessary. It is also there as I have lost the 5 watt recording and have deleted the file and thus could not repeat the same test again. Despite the results of the 64 cycle render, some returns may be diminished because the CPU is not the only thing working in your computer or a phone and at rare and almost never seen times finishing a task earlier just might be more efficient. Assuming you shut down your PC afterwards, so pretty much never in the recorded history of mankind. Once again, silence.
Looking at these graphs, the performance results are almost identical, which is expected. However, here we can see some minimal yet negligible changes in the frequency gain, which means that the CPU could not sustain the higher frequencies for far too long. Heat, however, paints a warmer picture, with the 102 degrees Celsius result being an artifact, with which Excel simply wouldn't want to work without. Finally, the total efficiency shows a similar picture, and with all of that, we can deduct that higher frequencies have a negative effect on efficiency, and the length of the task practically does not. In an ideal world, all programs could use all cores, but that is not the case, which is why, for some, high frequencies are justified. Next up, we have the GPU. Nothing really to add, GPU is practically a CPU specialized for different tasks. Same rules apply, the faster it is, the less efficient it is. For reasons of it is entirely pointless, we will not mention the motherboard, RAM, storage devices, as their power draw is negligible. To be precise, your CPU, GPU, PSU and display will probably account for almost all the power requirements. Which brings us to the display. While there are many different manufacturing ways one display might be more efficient than the other, the only ones you can truly affect are the type of the display, refresh rate and brightness. To start with, some displays are simply more efficient than others. LCD displays draw less power in general, but OLED displays are more efficient at displaying darker image. Logically, higher refresh rate will require more power. But that isn't the focus point here as you would typically get a high refresh rate monitor in order to have a higher refresh rate. Instead, let's talk brightness. You see, the human eye sees stuff a little bit differently. In order to double how bright something is to the human eye, you need to exponentially increase the light source. In addition, the warmer the display is, the less light it will emit, thus it becomes less efficient. This might be an issue with some lower quality displays which require a lot of power for higher brightness settings which in turn increase the temperature. You might have noticed that on phones where starting from lowest brightness to roughly 30% barely takes any extra power while going from 90 to 100 will burn the battery away as fast as Galaxy Note 7 will. However, reducing screen brightness might not always be the golden solution as the screen might already have linear efficiency. Or it could make some people suffer from headaches. PVM explained right here. Click it, it took me 30 hours to make it. The PSU or the power supply unit is simple. It converts from alternate to direct current at a specific efficiency ratio where for example if the PSU is 80% efficient that means that it will need 500 watts to deliver 400 watts, leaving the 100 watt difference as heat. Some PSU manufacturers even give graphs of efficiency regarding total load. And if you have a laptop, like me, you're in luck. You can't know the efficiency and it will probably burn your house down. Finally, we have the concepts of under and over volting and under and overclocking. To put it simply, the volting part is how much you're feeding your chip and the clocking part is how much work you're letting him do. Meaning, if you keep voltage the same but increase the clock frequency, that chip becomes more efficient. Same would apply were you to keep the clock frequency the same, but reduce the voltage. However, if you give it too much work or you don't feed it enough, it will starve and die. Well, not literally die, but it will crash. Kinda like the Russian economy. In theory, you could achieve higher efficiency levels by underclocking your chip, which would mean letting it work at lower frequency, thus avoiding the inefficient performance levels, and combine it with undervolting, which would make all the remaining performance levels require less power. Keep in mind, due to the way a chip is manufactured, you might have an amazing variant which is capable of high overclocks or low undervolts, but you also might have a chip that will end up starved by the smallest change. It's pretty much luck. Silicon lottery. Part 2 will come out sometime in the future, when it is ready, and when I have the will and time to do it. Some other videos from the efficiency list might come out first. Until then, have fun.